Okay, Mr. McCann, you may proceed with your examination of this witness. How old were you on September 26th, 1988? I was only 13. You were 13 years of age? Yes. At that time, you were a student, were you not? I was a student. And on that particular day, did you attend the school the, to which you were assigned? Yes. And did there come a time? Are you hearing the witness? Okay. I'm sorry, are you hearing the witness? Yeah, they've all indicated yes, so. Okay. Well, well, okay, because it's very quiet to me. Uh, just speak up a little bit, sir, and get up maybe a little closer to the microphones. They should pick up your voice. Did there come a time on that day, September 26th, 1988, that you were on your way home from school? Yes, I was. And what time was that to your best recollection? Between three and four. And as you were making your way home, did you get in the area of about North 25th and West Wells Street? Yes. And that's here in the city of Milwaukee? Yes. Milwaukee County, Wisconsin? Yes. Did you notice anything unusual at that time? No, I don't. Did, did you see anybody or did anybody come up to you? Yes, Jeffrey Dunn. And what, how did he come up to you? When did you first see him? It's on the corner of 25th and Wells. And did he say anything to you? Yes, he told me, like, um, he asked other kids if they would just pose for, you know, quick $50. If they would pose for a quick $50? Yes. And what did you say to him more, or what did he say to you then? I asked him if it is his career, or, or he said it's a hobby. He said it's a hobby? Yes. What, what did you say then, or what did he say then? He asked me if I, if I want to pose for him just for a quick $50. And when he asked if you'd pose for the quick 50, that's when you asked him if he was a professional or a hobby, and he said it's his hobby. Yes. What, did, what then happened? Then we start walking to his apartment. You walked to his apartment building? Yes. And did you get to his apartment building? Yes. About how far was it roughly, that walk, if you recollect? A block or two. And then did you go into the building and go to a particular apartment? Yes. And you went inside that apartment? Yes. And what happened then? He asked me if I prefer posing, you know, strip or, you know, with my clothes on. Was there any discussion before that about how old you were or what level of high school you were in? Yes, he asked me what school I went to and then how old I am, and I told him. And do you remember whether you said you were a freshman that year or? Yeah, I told him I was a freshman. I was only 13. When you got into the apartment, what was said after you got into Mr. Dahmer's apartment? He asked me if I, you know, if I, which way should I pose, strip or with my clothes on? And I told him, you know, with my clothes on. At this point, I can advise the court that Mr. Boyle has stipulated that the identification of the Jeff Dahmer that he is speaking of is the defendant in this proceeding. Very well. When you said with your clothes on, what happened then? Well, he took one shot and then later on he asked me, it would look better if, you know, with my clothes off. Right. Did, where was the first shot taken? It was on a bed. Right. Was there a bed in the apartment there? Yes. Sir. Right. And when that first shot was taken, were you on that bed? Yes. Right. And were you sitting on the bed or laying on the bed? Can you, what's your best recollection of that? I was laying on the bed. Did you, when there, any, when there was a discussion about a stripper with clothes, did he do anything with respect to your clothes with respect to that first shot? Yeah, he pulled it up and then, you know, up to my neck. When you say he pulled it up, up to your neck, are you speaking of your shirt? Yes, my shirt. Right, and did he take a shot at that time? After it had been pulled, your shirt had been pulled up to your neck area, was a, a photograph taken? Yes. Do you recall what type of a, f uh, a camera it was? It was more like a po Polaroid. 
And does that, and you decide that from because you could see the picture come out yes. after it was taken? Yes. What happened after that first picture was taken? Then he started like saying I should open my fly. And then I told him no, you know, and then he's, he's unzip it. Well, did you take that second shot then or did you first go into another part of the apartment? We stayed there, for, we sat there for a while and then we went in the kitchen. He asked, he offered me some drink. And, and when he offered you the drink, where did you go then? I followed him in the kitchen. And what happened in the kitchen? He made me coffee. And did he put anything into the coffee, any from another bottle? Yes, he did. It was more like a cream, chocolate color like. A, a chocolate covered like cream? Yes. And did he mix the coffee? Yes, he did. Was there a pot there somewhere that he, he used? I, he used a faucet, hot water. And then mixed some coffee in somehow, yeah. then poured this in? Yes. And what happened then? Then we went back to the living room. Did you have any of that coffee? Did he have any of that, if you noticed? He took a little sip. He took then, a little sip, and then what? Then I drank about half. Then he said, you know, why don't you just finish it? So I just took, I just drank it real quick. The rest of the coffee cup? Yes. And <clears throat> were there any more photographs taken then? Did you go back into the living room? Yes, we did. We were in the living room. And did you, was any photograph taken after you had the coffee? No. How many photographs were taken? More likely two. Right. You've told us about the first one when your, your shirt was pulled up around your chest. Tell us about how the second photograph was taken. My zippers were open and my shirt was still up. Your shirt was still up. Did you take the second photograph after the first? Yes, we did. Right, and your shirt was pushed up, and what happened to your, was there any discussion about your zipper between you and Mr. Dahmer? I put it halfway down, and then he just put it all the way down. Did, did, was there any discussion between you and him about putting it halfway down, the zipper? Did he say anything to you about how, what you should do, if anything, with your zipper? Yeah, he, he said that I should put it all the way down and then, you know, show my uh, underwear. And you put it halfway down, and then what did he do? He, he put it all the way down. And what else did he do? And then he, he grabbed my pe penis. He went under your underwear and grabbed your penis? Yes, he did. And what happened then? And then I just put it back. You took it away from him and put it back into your underpants? Yes. And then was the next picture, the second picture taken mm -hmm. at that point? Yes. What happened then? Then I just, I told him I, I gotta go. And then before I left, he told me he liked listening to people's st stomach. And what did he do then? Then I was on the bed still and then he came more like leaning down and then he start, he put his ears to my stomach. Then he start kissing it. Started kissing your stomach? Yes. And then <clears throat> what did you do? I just knew right away I just get out, have to get out of there. And what did you do when you figured you had to get out of there? What did you do? Put on, zip my pants, my shirt back to normal and then grab my book bag and w walk out the door. Right. Had you gone out to the kitchen before the pictures were taken and had the coffee? Or what, did you take the picture, one picture, then go to the kitchen, come back for the second picture? One picture and then to the kitchen, then came back. All right. So the first picture you took, then to the kitchen, then back for the second picture? Yes. And then after he kissed your stomach, you said, I got to get out of here, something yes. like that. What did you do then? I just grabbed my book bag and then I opened the door and you moved to the door of the apartment? Yes. Had the door, was the door of the apartment closed at that time? Yes, it was. And had it been closed after you entered the apartment? Yes. And what did Mr. Dahmer do when you went to the, to the door with your book bag? He said, wait, don't forget your money, and don't tell no one that I'm doing this. 
Wait, don't forget your money and don't tell anyone I'm doing this? Yes. Did he give you any money? Yes, he did. I mean, he came up to you and, and gave you the money? Yes. All right. Was the door open or closed, if you recollect, at that time? I opened it. And, in pardon? In case if he tried anything, I would, you know, the door would be open for me. And what happened then? Did he give you the money? He gave me the $50. Was, did, was the door closed or open, if you recollect, when he gave you the $50? It was open. I opened it. And then what happened? Then I walked out. And then once I got out of the, um, the apartment, I start, I knew right away I was dizzy. And what happened? You start, were you starting to walk home? Yes, I did. And did you feel dizzier as you walked further towards your house? Yes. What happened when you got home? I slammed the door. I couldn't even walk straight and just headed to bed. You headed to bed? Yes. Did you get into the bed? Yes, I did. When is the next time you became conscious of where you were? Where were you? At the hospital. At the hospital? Yes. And you were there for a while at the hospital? That, then did you come back that evening to your home? Yes. Did a police officer or police officers come to your home that night? Yes. And did they ask you to show them where this apartment was? Where, did you tell them what happened to you that afternoon? Yes. Did you go with the officers and point out the apartment and the apartment building? Yes, I did. And did you later come down to the police headquarters and look at some pictures? Yes. And did you pick out the picture that was Mr. Jeff Dahmer? Yes. That's all for direct. Cross-examination. Uh, be so brief. Just, I wasn't even going to ask you any questions, but did you say that he put his ear to your stomach? Yes, he did, first. Thank you, sir. That's it. Any redirect? Witness may step down. Court will take a recess at this time. And then would you state your name? Spell your last name, please. The name is Michael Salinas, S-A-L-I-N-A-S. Mr. Salinas, after information concerning the case of Mr. Dahmer came into the news media, did you recall an incident where you had an encounter with Mr. Dahmer? Um, not initially. Uh, in the beginning, uh, the face from the media looked vaguely familiar uh, at, at, at the initial outset of the case. However, uh, uh, upon looking at a photo of uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, an older photo taken, um, I then recognized him and also seen a profile photo of him also uh, recognized him from the, uh, the incident. And you recalled having an encounter with Mr. Dahmer? Yes, I do. And you reported that to the police, correct? No, I didn't. All right. Were you spoken to? I'm sorry. I, re I reported it to the police once I identified him as, okay. That, that's what I meant. You didn't report it at the time of no, the incident? No, not at the time of the incident. All right. And at the time you reported it to the police, you recalled it as occurring in the spring of 1986, or that was your estimation, correct? That's correct at the time. Um, when do you recall it as having occurred? Actually, actually, uh, I recall it occurring in the spring of '87. And why was, what brought to your mind that it must have been the spring of 1987? Uh, because during that time of the incident, I was working at the Performing Arts Center, and upon looking at a past resume, I noticed that at that time it was in 1987. Now, where did you encounter Mr. Dahmer on that date? Uh, outside the sale of e, uh, after uh, during bar close. And were you alone or with someone else? I was with somebody else. And was that person a friend of yours? Yes, he was. And what happened when the two of you encountered Jeffrey Dahmer? Um, a conversation was started as to the fact that he. Uh, uh, stated his name, uh, his, his first name, and then uh, said that he was from Chicago and that he uh, had a room that he had rented out and that he had a bottle of, um, of rum and if we would like to come in and finish it. And was he the one that started the conversation? Yes, he was. Then what happened? Uh, we then took a cab. 
Who called the cab? Jeffrey did. Then what happened? We went into the cab and uh, were dropped off at the Ambassador Hotel. All three of you? Right. What happened when you got to the Ambassador Hotel? Uh, we went, uh, strangely enough, uh, it seemed to be through a side door. Um, it, I found it odd that I didn't see anybody in that uh, building at all and went up a flight of stairs. All three of you? Yes, we did. Then what happened? Uh, we went inside the room and uh, he mentioned that he needed to go downstairs and get some sodas out of the soda machine for, the, for the room. Mr. Dahmer mentioned that? Yes, he did. Now, at this point, about how much time had you spent with him? I estimated approximately a half an hour to 45 minutes. Before he went downstairs to get sodas? Uh, yes. And had you been carrying on a conversation with him? Uh, not during the cab ride. Uh, it, actually, when we entered the room, not much of a conversation either, other, other than the fact that, that he asked us what kind of soda that we liked. And then what did he do? Uh, he came back uh, from getting the sodas, and at that time we had already had seated ourselves. Um, I was sitting on the bed, uh, on the chair facing a wall, and, uh, or against a wall, and my friend was on the floor in front of the TV. And what happened with regard to the drinks? Um, he began to make the drinks, and uh, I found it uh, also odd at the time that uh, when he had made them, his back was turned, and it uh, was something that had stuck out at me. Now, you said his back was turned. Do you mean that he was blocking your vision of what he was doing while he was making the drinks? Mm, that's correct. And you said your friend was seated on the floor. First of all, how many beds were there in this room? There was two. One closer to the door, one further inside? Right. And there was a television? Right. And where was that? That was uh, at the foot of the bed that was farther from the door. And where was your friend seated? On the, on the floor in front of the television. And where were you? On the chair uh, that was uh, on the side where the bed, the farther bed was from the door. All right, so if you came in, there'd be one bed, then a second bed, and then beyond that, yet there was a chair? A chair facing that bed, correct. And you were seated in that chair, and your friend was seated at the end of the bed? Right. On the floor? On the floor. And after Mr. Dahmer mixed the drinks, what did he do? Uh, he then gave us the drinks. And. What did he do next? Uh, he did sit on the bed, or lay on the bed, um, but then he did something very strange. He had gotten up and stripped off all of his clothes. And uh, what did he say to that? He, he uh, laid back on the bed and asked us uh, if, if we'd like to strip off our, cl our clothes, and at that point I, I told him no. Then what happened? Had, did you have the drink already at this point? I did have the drink, and it was, uh, it was with me, and I had taken maybe a sip or two out of it. When he did this, when he took off his clothes and lay down on the bed, had he touched either you or your friend? Uh, no, he didn't. Did you and your friend, like, exchange glances when he did this? Yes, we did. What happened next? Uh, we, after we had exchanged glances, uh, I began to talk to Mr. Dahmer, um, small talk, uh, for a little while, uh, what I can remember was something to do with, um, his past uh, history in the Army or, or, His or past history where? In the Army. He was telling you about his Army days? Right. And what was your friend doing? Watching a television show. Were you particularly nervous or frightened? No, I wasn't. There were two of you there at the time? Yes, there was. Did you start drinking the drink? Yes, I did. What happened next? Uh, I, I don't remember. Uh, I estimate that I probably had a few sips out of the drink. I know that I didn't finish it, and um, I, that was it. Uh, I, I um, blacked out. What's the next thing you remember? I woke up on the foot of the chair, uh, at the foot of the chair, on the floor, um, with my pants unbuckled. And what about your friend? Where was he? He was lying on the bed, uh, and I got up and went to wake him up. What happened next? 
um, we got up and we looked around uh, the room looking uh, to see where Mr. Dahmer had gone to and uh, we walked and looked in the bathroom and decided that we should leave. The, uh, the door, I believe, was wide open. About how long were you passed out? I'd estimate uh, three to four hours. And prior to that, how long had you spent with Mr. Dahmer in, from the time you met him um, until the time you did pass out? Approximately an hour and a half. When he had conversation with you, was he coherent? Yes, he was. He described his past life? or his time in the army? Yeah. Were any of his thoughts rambling or unconnected? No. Except for the fact that he, when he came into the room, took off his clothes. Did he explain why he did that to you? No, he didn't. Uh, just that he said that he preferred to, to have his clothes off. And he invited you to take yours off too, correct? Yes, he did. Did he react in any way when you said no, or did he just let it go? No, he didn't. He um, had a small talk with me and, and had his uh, hands behind his head and appeared to be very relaxed. While he was lying on the bed? Right. All right, so he's lying on the bed with his hands behind his head, his clothes off, and he's just having small talk with you? That's right. Okay. At any time, was his conversation unconnected or incoherent? Uh, no, actually, it, it was quite a nice conversation from what I remember. And after a few sips of the drinks, the next thing you remember is waking up several hours later? Yes. Other than your pants being unbuckled, did you notice anything else about your clothing? Once we had stepped outside, uh, my friend had noticed that he had a split up his, uh, the back of his pants, probably starting from mid-thigh to uh, uh, right up through his buttocks. Did you see that also? Yes, I did. Anything else? It was a very clean cut. It wasn't a rip. Okay. Did you notice anything else about your clothing? Yes, he had no underwear. Your, your friend noticed this about his clothing? Yes, he said to me that I have no underwear and I had some on last night. Okay. Was your clothing disarranged in any other way? It was, it was a disarray upon awakening uh, and also the pants were unbuckled, but I also had an abrasion on my head. Okay, where on your head did you have an abrasion? Uh, smack dab in the middle of my forehead. Uh, it appeared to be uh, it was a, a rug burn. It was, uh, it was very red and there was a bump um, and very symmetrical. About the size uh, of, of, actually it was a little larger than a quarter size. And prior to that evening, you didn't have any injury there? Prior, prior, before that time, there was no injury there, correct? At the Ambassador Hotel? Uh, yeah, prior to going prior to, to the that, Ambassador there's Hotel. And when did you first notice the injury to your head? Uh, I didn't notice it until I had gotten home and looked in the mirror. And it was right in the middle of your forehead, you indicated? That's right. Your Honor, I'd also indicate at this point that uh, I've spoken to counsel and there's a stipulation that the Mr. Dahmer referred to is Jeffrey Dahmer, the defendant in this trial. Is that correct? That's correct. Maybe I should use that word stipulation quite a few times and I don't know that we've really explained that word to the jury. Okay. And jurors, perhaps you should understand that when the attorneys stipulate or agree that a certain fact is true, then you, are, you and I are bound to accept that fact as having been conclusively proven. In this case, we're talking about the identification of Mr. Dahmer. Go ahead. I have nothing further of this witness. Thank you. Cross-examination. Mr. Salinas, I just have a couple of questions for clarification, okay? That's right. Um, first off, you had indicated here today that you believe now that it was in the spring of 87 rather than 86, is that correct? That's right. You're fairly certain of that? I, I'm, I'm very time. certain, yeah. Okay. Um, 
You've indicated that you were at Sela V Tavern with your friend, correct? Right. Um, was this a friend that you had gone there with, or did, was this somebody that you had met at the bar? Uh, it was a friend of mine that I met there. Is this a close friend that you would normally call up and hang out at with? At the time, it was a close friend, yeah. Okay. Um, you indicated that you had gone after you met with uh, Mr. Dahmer over to the Ambassador Hotel. And you stated that you went into a side door, is that correct? It appeared to be a side door. Um, there was a stairs. Uh, upon opening the door, there was a stairs immediately in front of us. Okay. Do you recall giving a report relative to this matter to the police department when you had called it in? This uh, was after everything was all done and, and this story had broke. You called in and you talked to a detective about this? Yes. Okay. Do you recall that it, at the time, in, the, in the, the report that you gave, it said that you entered the front. Is this just now that you remember better that it wasn't the front, it was the side? Uh, yeah, it's just uh, upon memorization of, of the, the, the way that I came in. It, I'm saying it appeared to be a side door because I didn't see anything else but the stairs. Okay. You've also indicated here today that you went up to the room and then Jeff Redomer had left and gone back down and picked up sodas, is that correct? That's right. Okay. You indicated again in this other report that, in fact, on your way up to the room, you had picked up the sodas at the same time, giving the impression that all of you had done this. Now, do you remember? Yeah, which upon, is upon remembrance, I do remember now being up in the room and him asking what types of soda we liked, and then ran down to go get them. Okay, so it wasn't that you all had just been passing the soda machine in the No, because when he came back, we had already been seated. Okay. And likewise, too, just like I said, just for clarification's mm -hmm. sake, you had indicated, in, as you reported this, that there was just one double bed in the room and now you're indicating that there was in fact two. Was that correct? Uh, I was always under the assumption there was two. I, I don't. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Like I said, just trying to get some mm -hmm. clarification here. Um, further, you had indicated that um, at the time when Mr. Dahmer had taken off his clothing, that you and your friend had exchanged glances. That's right. Did you say anything? Was there anything spoken about the fact? No, it, uh, <clears throat> we didn't say anything. We had just thought it was strange at the time. Okay. Um, further, you had indicated that you felt that it was of a suspicious nature the way he was turning his back and making the drinks. Is that correct? That's right. I'd like to ask you, with, with the fact that you felt it was suspicious and taken note of it at the time that he had turned his back a certain way to make the drinks and also had taken off his clothing, did that in any way make you feel uncomfortable? No, in no way at all did I feel threatened by him. Uh, the fact that I remembered him turning his back at the time just struck me as rather peculiar, something that uh, uh, just stuck out at me. But at that time, uh, through the whole night before I had blacked out, I had, I had no uh, fear or suspicion of of uh, Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay. I, I must say that those were the two only odd incidents through that whole night that uh, came to mind. So there was nothing else that, that no, would give no, you or your friend? Did your friend ever say to you that, well, hey, this is a little weird, let's leave? No, he didn't. Okay. Nothing more than just a glance? No, actually, he, he hardly spoke through the whole thing. Okay. You'd indicated further that you, um, when you woke up, that you uh, had a, a, a bump or a swelling on your head? You said yes, that I did. You've indicated a rug burn? Uh, it appeared to be one. Okay. And, and further, in, in this report that you gave, that you, you'd indicated that you felt when you woke up that you were a little drugged up, that you were in somewhat of a type of stupor, that you'd realized that, in fact, you had been drugged. Yeah, the next day I, I didn't uh, recall anything, uh, or, or didn't recall half the things that I did the next day. I did have to go to work the next day, and... Uh, a lot of the activities that I did that, that following day uh, were, were unclear to me. I, I don't recall a lot of the things that I did. Okay. When you woke, you said the only other person that was there was your friend that you had gone there with, correct? That's right. Mr. Dahmer wasn't there? No, he was gone. And did he likewise feel as though he had been drugged? Yes, he did. Did either of you think about perhaps going to the hospital? I mean, here's your, this is an instance where you're with somebody for an evening, you didn't know him, he says he's from Chicago, you both all of a sudden black out, you both wake up, and did you have any conversation with the fact that maybe no, you should didn't. go to the hospital? We, no, we didn't. We thought it was strange, but we had just uh, put it off as something that was uh, 
somebody slipped us a, a Mickey or something and, and, and took a, uh, advantage of us for some reason or another. I was quite angry, though, after that, and for five days after, did go looking for him and didn't see him anywhere. <coughs> Okay, you had indicated further that um, you, in fact, never reported this to police at the time. No, I didn't. Do you, did your friend report it? No, he didn't. Do you know, did your friend go to the hospital? No, he didn't. Oh, I did ask him if he hurt uh, in the buttocks, and he said no, he didn't. Okay. So neither of you reported to the hospital, and neither of you had, had reported it to the police. But you've indicated that you went to look for him. It was because you wanted to find him so you could report it to the police? No, actually, at, at that time, I was quite angry and, and quite young and went after him to go beat him up. Okay. Did you ever check in the hotel as far as who signed in for the room? Did you ever check a name? No, I didn't. I didn't investigate any further than that. Okay. Now, you've indicated that you, you waited until after this at all broke and it was out in the newspapers and then you'd recognize Mr. Dahmer and that's why you brought it to the police's attention. Mm -hmm. How long was that after the story broke that you actually brought it to the police's attention? Oh, I identified the picture after coming back from camping on Labor Day weekend. Um, I, I was camping and came back and saw uh, a picture of him in the Milwaukee Journal of a family photo. Uh, back in the early 80s, and his hair was a little more ruffled uh, in another photo that I had seen of him in the past, and that's when I, I had recognized him. So Labor Day of, of 87, you're saying? No, 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 this... I mean, excuse me, of, of, of 91? Right. So that would have been September? Yeah, I, I, came, I believe I came camp back uh, from camping uh, either late August or near, that, near around that time. Do you recall giving a report at any time on August 1st of 91? No, I, I do know that I went camping though around that time, and through some media, uh, uh, so, through some newspaper photos of him uh, uh, from a few years younger, I did recognize him. Okay. And th after that, I did call the, the police. I just asked for clarification because this report here indicates that you in fact talked to a detective on August first, and now you're in okay. September. I was just wondering sure. how long it was that you actually waited. After this all broke and you decided to bring it to the, the police department's attention, did you ever contact your friend and ask him if he had any thoughts to give you, if he wanted to come with you to talk to the police? <clears throat> Excuse me. I hadn't seen him. Uh, I had moved away and lost a touch with him. Um, I did go. Uh, I knew one person that had known him in the past and did call to see if he had seen him, but he said that he hadn't seen him in a couple years. So I have, I, I have not seen him uh, for quite a while. So you, you, you never discussed it with him. You never called him as far we, as bringing him to the police. We did. Uh, after the incident, we always we often discussed it uh, and talked about just the how, how strange it was. At well, when was that? This right after the incident? Uh, yeah, a few months after the incident. Okay, but not at the time that you actually did bring it to their attention in ninety one. Oh no, no. Okay. Without necessarily having to tell us, do you, do you know what your, your friend's last name is? No, I don't. Okay. Did you ever, by chance, that uh, next day, um, call the management of the hotel and ask whether, or just anonymously call in and say, hey, look, there's a guy that's up in room such and such that's drugging people? No, I, I never investigated any further. You never warned anybody about the fact that this was happening, that this had happened, in fact, to you? No, other than just discussion between me and my friend and maybe a couple other people. Okay. Uh, we thought uh, it had been a common occurrence for people sometimes to be slip something in their drink, and so we thought it was something uh, similar to that, and so we didn't look to investigate it any further other than the fact that I went looking for him. Okay, just one more question. Sure. That evening, when you woke up the next morning, you said you indicated that there was a bump on your head, that he had a slit in the pants, that you had some other problems. And your friend had a slit in his pants. Mm -hmm. 
Did you notice, was there any other, was there any property taken? Was there any necklaces, money, anything? No, none of us had noticed anything taken. Nothing was taken? Nothing was taken. No further questions. Redirect? No. <clears throat> okay, let's take a short recess and then we'll come out with the next witness. Courts in recess. All right, please.